bodies don't think, care, or have any problem with themselves. They never beat themselves up or shame themselves. They simply try to keep themselves balanced and to heal themselves. They are entirely efficient, intelligent, kind, and resourceful. Where there's no thought, there's no problem. It's the story we believe prior to investigation that leaves us confused. Byron Katie from the book, Loving What Is. I'm Stephen Middleton, coming to you from the Possibility Action Network. Our core values include, I am, I can, and I will. I am Possibility Man. Today, I want to share on the theme, mitigating emotional suffering. I started thinking about this subject today after visiting my LinkedIn page online. And as I scrolled through LinkedIn, I saw a picture of a man standing on the ledge of a bridge who had almost successfully died by suicide. Fortunately, passive buyers who saw him ran to him, grabbed him. Some grabbed his legs, others grabbed his shoulders, others grabbed his waist and pulled him into the rail of the bridge. Someone evidently went for a rope and then wrapped a rope around him and tied him to the bridge as they waited for others rescuers to come and give him the treatment that he needed. That man was lucky that someone walking by spotted him and was able to help him save his life. And that got me thinking about emotional suffering, a subject that the Possibility Action Network cares about and that we've talked about in this forum and also on our podcast. Today then, I simply want to explore with you to understand where human emotional suffering comes from. And as I reflect on this, there can only be three areas in the human experience where a person may connect their life to suffering. Now, there's only one place suffering can take place, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but there apparently are three areas of life that are connected to the suffering of a human being. These include the past, presently, or the future. If a human being is going to suffer, and I'm going to isolate where the only place suffering can take place, it has to be something about the past, it has to be presently or now, and something about the future. Now in contrast to the animal world, or that is our domesticated animals or even animals in the wild, it doesn't seem to be quite that way even though I've seen dogs and cats seem to have some memory of a past event in their life experience. But when you look at deer, for example, it seems like a deer is wired differently. I've seen deer just take out and run with a sound of gunshot and run, they would run and then run. They would even cross a highway running. Some of you have probably seen deer on the run. But once they get to a quiet place, the deer settles down and simply goes to grazing, you know, eating grass as if nothing happens. And if something else happens, a gunshot, the deer might look around to try to figure out, am I in danger? And the deer may respond to that. But humans apparently are wired differently. So we have responses to life. 
if we think we've had a good life experience, you know, we might say we're happy. We grew up in a good home. We always had plenty of food, you know, plenty of water. We were loved by the people who raised us. And we may go through life feeling happier than some people who have had a different type of life experience. Those individuals who might say, I had a bad life experience, may carry some of the baggage, you know, from their so-called bad life experience and report that they are unhappy. And then there are other humans who may look into the future, especially around money. If they don't have enough money, they may say, you know, I'm going to be unhappy, you know, in five years because I'm going to run out of money. Or if they, you know, have lost their jobs or anything like that that takes them into the future, they may report a different life experience. So past is connected to emotional suffering. Uh, presently or now is connected to human suffering. And also the future is connected to human suffering. But there is only one place that human suffering can exist. And that is presently, that is now. Now, I want to be clear, no matter what something that someone may have experienced in the past, I'm not saying that it was good or putting a, a judgment on it, but I'm simply observing that it's not happening presently. Now, of course, if you're in a dangerous situation, someone is assaulting you or someone is using harsh words against you, someone is you know, threatening your life, get out of the way. Treat it as if you're walking across the street and all of a sudden a car dashes out in the road. Look, get out of the way. No one should expose themselves to assault from another human being. But remember, that's a present occurring event. But if something happened last year, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and of course the decades can roll up, those events are not happening presently. So if we are suffering an event that's not happening presently, it can only mean that we are activating it innocently in this present moment. Emotional suffering then can only exist now and it can only exist via our thinking about that. The good news then is that it's possible for someone to experience personal transformation and learn how to take care of themselves. And that's what Byron Katie, in the quote that I read a moment ago, was talking about, that our bodies are efficient. Think about it. You know, we don't have to think about breathing. Breathing takes place. Our bodies allows us to feel. We don't have to think about feeling. Feeling takes place. Our bodies, you know, do we not have to think about hearing? And of course, you know, the list goes on because our bodies are designed to take care of us. I heard a doctor talking about emotional suffering some time ago. And he said that a human being has an emotional immune system, just like we have a biological immune system. So think about it. If we are in the midst of an event, in the midst of an ex excited experience that may calls forth a lot of stuff out of our past or stuff that we think may happen in the future, you know, we need to allow ourselves to settle down, to settle down to settle down. And the brain is plastic enough to allow us to learn that if an event is not happening now, that we are not in danger. So what then should we do if we sense that someone is experiencing an emotional hurt? Now, I am not advising anyone to play amateur psychologist or amateur psychiatrist or any type of therapist. I am not 
attempting to play amateur psychologist or therapist now. I'm simply suggesting that there are some strategies that we can take when someone is experiencing suffering and if they're trying to get out of it themselves or if you see them showing pain, being withdrawn and the like, what should you do? First, I would say talk to them if you're able to. Some people are not able to talk with someone who is suffering. If you're not that person, don't try. Ask someone else to do it. Talk to the person who you suspect is experiencing an emotional suffering. The second thing that I think you may want to do is suggest or ask them if they have been to their primary care physician. If the answer is no, suggest it. Why don't you see your physician and let your physician know about your problem? Your primary care physician is important because they may be able to refer you to someone that you can talk to. Or in some cases, until you're able to take care of yourself, even prescribe medication, even though I'm not an advocate of it, but to get you out of a pinch, maybe medication would be in order. And thirdly, talk to a therapist. But there's one thing that I have learned from experience is that emotional suffering comes from our thinking presently, in the present moment. And usually it comes from our thinking about events that are long gone no matter what they were. I, I remember I attended the school of Byron Katie many years ago, and she said that if someone strikes you in the struck you in the past, it's over. It's not happening presently. The only person who can activate it now is the person you see in the mirror, and it can only be via thought. I'm Stephen Middleton, coming to you from the Possibility Action Network. Our core values include, I am, I can, and I will. I am Possibility Man. Until next time, good day.